Hi friends, it's Melissa Murrow with Vintage Bee Design. And today I thought I would do something a little bit different. So this will be similar to last week's video and that we'll be doing using mold and lots of layers. But for this, I found that thrifting, I, I'm not like everybody else. I don't seem to find all the really good stuff at thrift stores when I find a lot of our plates and glasses and you can get them really inexpensively. So for this video, I picked up a couple wine glasses and some plates and I am using E6000 to glue them together. I am flipping the wine glasses upside down and these are sort of more bubble glasses. And I am then going to use my redesign with Prima molds, a couple different molds, and I am going to add them to the variety of configurations that I have done here, as you will see. I like to use a popsicle stick on some of these when I'm doing a lot of molds. I find it helps my fingertips a little bit. And I did use one of these thinner ones to wrap around the stem of the wine glass to kind of hide the, um, you know, the fact that it is a wine glass. I wanted to add a little more texture there. So I just sort of spun it around like a vine. And then I'm also using these Dollar Tree birdhouses. I'm just using some needle nose pliers to pull that little clip out. And I will fill that hole here in a second just with some of the um, little clay pieces that I have sitting around. You might notice that my birdhouses have names of paint colors on the bottom and that they are pre-painted. And that is because when we used to have our brick and mortar store, we used these to demo colors. We have these in our current booth out at Great American off of Phillips Highway, but I didn't need the duplicates. So I am just, again, using the molds and the clay, and I'm going to layer these out. If you find that these are sticking, you can always um, sprinkle some cornstarch or dust them with cornstarch and they'll come out really nicely. I have not found that to be a problem typically. I'm measuring this up and I'm just going to trim each of these in the same place and then I will use wood glue to attach them to the birdhouse. And for this project I'm using a little bit different shape birdhouse and this time I'm attaching it to a champagne flute. Once I've used E6000, let everything dried overnight and have added molds and let them dry it overnight, then I'm gonna take them outside and I'm gonna hit them up with some spray paint. And I'm choosing black for this and I'm using the paint and primer in one. I'll show you the can in a moment. And I'm just trying to get a good coat. I didn't do two coats on most of these. The goal here is that if I end up distressing back at all, I'm distressing back to the black and not to the glass itself. And I find spray paint to be the easiest way to achieve that. And here you get a really good idea of all the pieces. Okay, so the next part, I'm gonna take some DIY apothecary and I'm gonna mix it with some sea salt. And that is Dixie Bell's version of salt wash. And I am just um, mixing it up. I want this to be fairly thick because I want to add a lot of texture. This piece, these pieces, this little collection is gonna be all about the texture. So you can see it's not really coming off my stick. It is thick enough that it will, you know, peak if you will. I'm wiping off my jar before I put the lid back on and I'm gonna use a French tip brush and I'm gonna pounce that, creating lots of textures, making sure to get it into all of the nooks and crannies. The goal of having spray painted it black wasn't to have the black showing underneath. It was in the event that I distressed back, you couldn't see the glass. It would leave something. And indeed, at the end, you do see a little bit of the black in some of the places. And I will repeat the same process with the birdhouses as well as all of the other stands. I wanna make sure that every area gets a good coat. Now on the bottom of the birdhouse, because I do need it to stand and I'll be gluing it to something later, I sort of did a smooth coat, if you will. I didn't pounce, I just brushed it on. Because of the molds and how much texture I'm putting on here, I do need to let this dry for a couple of hours before I move on to the next step, which is gonna be taking a sponge. And then I'm using some DIY paint in the color crinoline, and I am simply pouncing it on here. Um, I do, the sponge is a little bit damp, so I basically got it wet and then wrung all the water out, and then I'm dipping it into the paint and I am just dabbing it onto the piece. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because it will leave some edges where um, one part ends and another part begins, sort of those 
tucked away part that will maintain the original apothecary color on here and it will create more dimension and texture when we finish the project. It will also leave a little bit of texture by pouncing versus using a brush, but I don't want it in all the nooks and crannies. I've slowed down to real time so that you can see a little better sort of the differentiation there and how it's leaving gaps. After that part is done and this layer is dry, I'm gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna stress back all of those peaks allowing that color underneath that green to show through and it will create a lot of really great texture that we will need as we progress through this. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design and we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee and I have just started a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links are in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. One of the best ways to showcase texture that you've created is to add a dark wax or a white wax. In this case, I'm gonna go with a dark wax because I'm actually gonna layer waxes here, but I really want this to look more vintage and old. And I think that dark wax tends to show all of the character and texture a little bit better. I did clear wax at first, which allows me then to use clear wax as an eraser to brighten up the piece. My goal isn't to make this dark, it's to make it look a little bit rustic and vintage. And I know pieces like this can seem like there are just so many layers, but I promise you the end result is definitely worth it because these do not look like plain glass or dollar store pieces anymore. They are definitely high end and you can get some good money out of things everybody can find at the thrift store. So the next step is to take some white wax. And as I always say, the DIY white wax is my favorite of all of the white waxes that we sell. And I'm using a stencil brush and I'm basically dry brushing this over the entire piece. And this is gonna brighten all of the highlight areas and leave that dark wax sort of in the low areas and in the white and the high areas. After that wax has had a chance to dry, we're gonna go back in with some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm choosing a sanding sponge. On this case, I just it's a little bit softer and less likely to scratch. And we're gonna pull back some of that green that we have in that bottom layer. It's gonna pull up where we have these rustic bits. I think you can see the green better on this one. Then we're gonna take the DIY gold gilding wax and we're gonna just rub it on the edges of all of the molds. And you can see on the birdhouse how that comes out. This is what really gives it that French country shabby chic look. And for the finishing touch, I have this goose that had been painted a few years ago and it needs an update. And I'm just using Dixie Belle's buttercream and I'm gonna paint the entire goose solid buttercream. And here is a look at the finished projects. I hope you like my collection today. All I did to finish these off were add some shabby bows, which I showed how to do in my last video. And then add a little bit of Spanish moss and a little bit of green moss that I both got from the Dollar Tree. And then I had some leftover greenery that I sort of stuffed and fluffed here and there, but adding some nice greenery really topped these off. And I will have these for sale uh, on my website, vintagebedesign.com. And I will also leave a link and a description of all of the molds and all of the products that I used in the description down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you are new here, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps to grow the channel. Thanks so much and have a great week. I will see you guys again next Sunday. If you enjoyed these pieces and you really like them, I would love to hear in the comments what you think. Do they still look like bowls and glasses or do you think that I achieved a high end look that you would never notice if I hadn't told you? Also, let me know which of these projects you might try out and which one you like the best. Thanks again.